Good evening, everybody. So welcome to our, well, I think this might be our third online open evening of the year. So um, thank you for joining us. Uh, last week, we obviously went through some curriculum things with everyone who is in attendance talking about what we do as a school. But today is a really good opportunity to find out more. So I'll do a few introductions, first of all. So uh, I'm David Hemsley. I'm the deputy head teacher here at the University of Liverpool Math School, and I'm also a physics teacher. Uh, I'll let Damien introduce himself. Hi, I'm Damien Haig. I'm the head teacher of the University of Liverpool Mathematics School. There you go. And um, what we'll do is I'll ask the students to introduce themselves. They can just tell you uh, just the first name and what year they're in, and perhaps they might want to say what their favourite A-level subject is, just to give you an idea as to they're subjects they enjoy. So let's see if everyone says maths. Who knows? Um, Tobias. Um, I, I am Tobias. I'm in year 12. Um, I have a hard time picking between maths and physics, so I'll go for further maths. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Tabitha. Um, I'm Tabitha. I'm in year 12 too. And my favourite subject is also maths. Excellent. Uh, Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm in year 13 and I'd probably say my favourite maths as well. <laughs> well. This is going well for math school. Okay, uh, Miss Um, I'm Michelle and uh, I'm in year 12 and my favourite subject is also math. <laughs> this is good. Uh, Emma, come on, Emma, break the chain. <laughs> uh, I'm Emma, I'm in year 12 and my favourite subject currently is physics. <laughs> Excellent. That's good, that's good. <laughs> uh, Anna? Um, hi, I'm Anna. Um, I'm in year 12, and my favourite subject is. Oh, no, you cut yourself off. Oh, just yeah. just... <laughs> We're in suspense now, Anna. We don't know what your favourite subject is. I think you might be having Wi Fi. Oh, it's uh, maths. I think my wife does. Yeah. Okay, maths. Good. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, um, all right. And uh, we've got Maisie. Uh, hi, I'm Maisie. I'm in year 13. Um, my favourite subject is probably computer science at the moment. Outstanding. Did you do computer science at GCSE, Maisie? No. No, awesome. So there you go. That's something we could potentially explore a little bit later on. And Matthew. Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm year 12 as well. But my favourite computer science is also computer science. Well, there you go. My favourite subject is computer science. <laughs> Perfect. Brilliant. Okay, so listen, um, how tonight can work then is we've obviously got um, some people joining us on the Zoom meeting. So essentially any questions that you have got, um, those questions could be asked in the chat box. OK, and those messages, obviously, we can pick those up and we can see those and we can ask our students. So those questions will just come to me and Damien. Um, so if you've got a question you'd like to ask our students, that's absolutely fine. Ask away and we can help you with anything because your questions will be good for other people in uh, the room now and also everyone else watching this later on on YouTube. So we've got a lot of questions that we can explore with our students if you haven't got much to ask. So we could always make a start and it's anything just crops up in your mind, whatever it may be. Again, we're not ready for any particular question, but students will just answer honestly for anything you'd like to know. So do put that into the chat box and we will ask our students. Okay, so uh, in light of uh, wanting to get started, I shall ask the first question then. So uh, the first question is basically, what is it like to be a student at the University of Liverpool Math School? So just a little overview as to what it's like. Does anyone particularly want to answer that question or shall I randomly ask one of you? So I'm, we have a nice system of hands up ready so there you go they're all they're all quite happy I tell you, i'll ask one of my year 30s who's been here the longest so uh let's go to Maisie first of all shall we and then sophie can tell us something so yeah what's it like being a student at the university of liverpool math school um i'd say it's very different to sort of my old school so i it's a more focused environment i would say as well so since we do only offer the four subjects, there's a lot more focus towards them, a lot more focus towards from the, the teachers towards them. Like there's always someone you can go to to ask about one of the problems if you're having one. And I also feel it's a lot more 
he's not other kind of environment because we're, we're all here to study the same subjects that we all then chose to do and that we all wanted to do. So. Perfect. Okay, Sophie, you got anything to add to that with your year and a bit experience of our school? I'd say it's more intense than any normal school, but I'd say it pays off being more intense because like we got A level maths done in year twelve. Um, but also like something that you don't have at any other school is that all the teachers are like like very good and very knowledgeable about their, their subjects and very good teachers and they have a lot more time for you because it's such a small school. It's that as I, as like Maisie said, it's a lot more focused and a lot more supportive than the normal school, but it is more intense. Okay, that's good. So um the intensity doesn't necessarily come as a negative thing from your perspective. Is anyone, I don't know, uh, Thomas had just joined us. So uh, Thomas, everyone else just introduced themselves and said what their favourite subject is. And as a physics teacher, I'm looking forward to your response. Um, so Thomas, if you'd like to say hello just to everyone, uh, let's see what your favourite subject is. Oh, well, um, as you can probably get from Dave's introduction, I very much enjoy physics. It's I have an ongoing debate with many people about why physics is better than maths and computer science and everything else in the world. Um, except maybe Star Wars, but you know, that's about everything that you need to know about me in one go. <laughs> that's tremendous. Okay, um, right, great. So the idea there is that, yeah, it is different, I think, here. And I think that's one thing that Damien always likes to emphasize as well, is that the experience here would be very different. And the experience here is not right for everybody. If you want to do these subjects, though, I think you'd find it hard pushed to get a, a more amazing experience than you'd get uh, with us. Um, we've got a question in the chat box. So what clubs or extracurricular activities uh, do you participate in school? So, okay, we can actually, I'll go, I'll go around all of you actually, and you can tell us what extracurricular clubs or what, what things do you do that are perhaps beyond the curriculum? So anything that you get involved with. So, okay, let's go around. So Tobias, do you want to tell us a little bit about what things you do beyond the A-level subjects that we study? I'm currently doing F1 in schools, which is a challenge where you design an F1 car and all of the project management surrounding that, which is then tested in a national comp in regional and national competition, if you're good. Um, and also, all, there's the student cabinet as well. I've forgotten all of the other things I do. <laughs> um, we should probably explain what the student cabinet is, because most schools have a student council, don't they? Yeah, okay, Tobias, do you want to go and Tobias is muted now, so... Um, the student cabinet is essentially the, the name reflects that the school does take it a lot more seriously than other schools. I think it's the school really does listen to student feedback because it's a new school um, and it, it is very responsive. So um, the student cabinet is where a select what part of the students go and meet with the head teacher so the head teacher can give them stuff to communicate with all of our students and all of the other students can tell the cabinet stuff to communicate with the staff um, so it's basically facilitating that clear communication I, I get really good advice from the students in those meetings it's really really helpful and they they help us to solve problems and figure out plans and that kind of thing so they're, they're, they're really good <laughs> yeah after and obviously as a uh prospective students or parents watching this the school is very responsive and we do send out a lot of surveys so very recently Damien got um, some information back from parents regarding what their thoughts were on the school and again it's all very informative for us to make sure we're doing the best job we can do. I'm actually trying to tone it down a bit at the moment because I, th I think we've almost do, do too much on it sometimes but yeah it is, <laughs> it's really good to have everybody involved. Excellent. And uh, Tobias, I believe you're doing a year-long activity as well that's going to give you a qualification at some point. Did you forget that one? Something additional you're doing, which will involve going up a hill in a couple of weeks. Oh, yes, of course, the Duke of Edinburgh Gold. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of the students are doing the Duke of Edinburgh Gold. A lot of those students are also the Cabinet. So much so that the Cabinet cannot meet on the day that Duke of Edinburgh happens. <laughs> the majority right. of them are doing Duke of Edinburgh instead. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. oh, that's brilliant. I think, yeah, I'll go, I'll go around and see a couple of people can tell us the things they do. There's a lot of extracurricular clubs we do because we are very conscious. We don't want students just to be uh, just studying the subjects and passing exams. We want to really educate well beyond what we study and give a Sophie's got a hand up, Dave. Oh, yeah, I'm getting to her. So go on, Sophie, tell us more. Um, what I'd say is 
with our school, which is actually nice, and I've never had this before, that we do any extracurricular you want to do. So, like, when I came in, there was Star Wars Club, and I'm not a Star Wars fan like Thomas is. Um, so I just made my own. So Emma and me have a, and a few other people have an environmental group. So um, we're currently in the process of, like, building a vertical garden within school. And basically, you can just run it however you want. You literally just have to write it on a whiteboard and whoever shows up, shows up. We do any club that you want to do. You just have to mention it and it'll get done. So, so we've got we've got the seeds and the compost and the planters and things like and that. And the already. planter and it's getting done on Thursday. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's brilliant. So, yeah, you just mentioned Emma. So Emma, Emma's in year 12 and Sophie's in year 13. So obviously Sophie came up with the idea, I think, for the environmental group. So Emma, was it nice to get involved with the environmental group for somebody coming in in year 12? Um, yeah, I was actually, I, I like the amount of clubs that we have because um, in my old school, we only really had one or two clubs. Um, and in this school, there are just so many different clubs you can get involved with. Um, and I enjoyed um, being in the environmental club because not only like um, I like talking about the environment, but also it let, let me it let me um, like meet people from other years and sort of socialize. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm saying that we, we could talk about this a lot, but I think there's probably more questions you might want to do. But the range of stuff is absolutely incredible. And we also do quite a lot of competitions as well. So, Michelle, um, do you want to explain some of the competitions that we do for, say, maths and physics that are beyond the specification, but still enriching? Uh, the education? Um, okay, so uh, there are not only competitions, and of course we have the the, uh, the, the uh, Olympiads, which are the Physics Olympiads and the Math Olympiads, and there are Informatics Olympiads for computer science, so uh, we can all participate in those competitions. And furthermore, we can all have, we can have uh, outreach activities from uh, a lot of universities. For example, we can have Quantum Club from Oxford, which I know a few of us are now um, heavily involved in. And we have Compost from Oxford again. And uh, I've just asked a, a math teacher at this school, and he gave me a lot of Olympiad math to do. And I think for people who find A-level math relatively um, not as challenging, might want to do a lot, like quite a bit of the Olympiad math to enrich your uh, horizon. and. Some of them are quite useful. I've just used one of the questions to prove the other questions. So yeah, <laughs> some of them are quite useful. And for physics, there are a lot of competitions like you can find them online. And yeah, basically, I think that's it. And uh, Thomas has his hand up, so you might want to invite him to talk. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. You can take over from me. That's a great idea. Thomas. Um, yeah, I wanted to throw one out there. Um, not it's not very much like me to talk about less academic things, but like on the on the other side of like the like the enrichment activities and stuff. Um, like so, if we say about like starting your own, so um, we started a Star Wars club. By we, I mean like me and Dave at the start of last year, like in the first week. Um, so we've been doing that for a while now, um, and I've, I've started a group with, with um, me and my brother and some year twelves do it. Um, so today we did it and um, we played some Dungeons and Dragons if anyone knows what that is at lunch just like some relaxation and things um, and then on a Thursday we some of us go down to um, Aurora's room Aurora's like the head of physics and we do like a support group for LGBT stuff and neurodiversity and things like that so it's just like, like using like any time that we get is like a chances to relax and talk about things that we need to and things like that as well as doing work obviously that's brilliant. And Anna, are you able to progress your flute skill whilst you're here? Uh, yes. So every Thursday at London the University, not the other side, opposite the, our school, and um, one of the PhD students at the university teaches me the flute because when I was in my old school, I used to get flute lessons in school. But because obviously with this being a smaller college, there's not necessarily like a flute teacher coming in every week to teach 20 kids. So um, we arranged it for a PhD student to teach me just at the building opposite. Yeah, that's brilliant. So again, I think like someone else mentioned, if there's things that you want, we can hopefully find a way with the links that we've got. Okay, but extra curricular, to answer um, your question, there's a lot we do. We do a lot of sport as well on the Friday. So basically anything people want to do that are enthusiastic about, we can make happen. And we think it gives people a really good opportunity to 
build up all kinds of skills beyond just the academic stuff. So hopefully that answers your uh, question quite thoroughly. Can, can I just pick up on um, Anna's last contribution? Because um, we pre-COVID, I had discussions with the music department uh, about our students possibly getting involved in musical performances with the university. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to start doing that again soon when thing, as things get increasingly back to normal. Don't know whether anybody's mentioned that to you, Anna, at any point. Um, not yet, right, but uh, I'll, I'll get in touch with them and see what we can sort out. Um, and I, I'm very keen on music as well, so we, I, I do drag the students off to concerts at the Philharmonic occasionally, and uh, we'll hopefully be doing that again soon. Uh, and hopefully the lunchtime concerts at the university will be getting going again on Wednesdays soon, and we can start going to those. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, brilliant stuff. So again, we've talked a lot about that there. I mean, I think Obviously, we can talk about our subjects as well. So, um, okay, so I suppose the next question is, is I suppose, what are lessons like here at uh, the University of Liverpool Math School? And I suppose the interesting thing for people listening is, like, how might it have been different to, say, your year 11 experience? And, like, you know, is, is it similar to what the experience might be like for your friends who stayed in uh, the schools you were at? So I suppose, yeah, what are, what are lessons like? What's it like to be learning in the University of Liverpool Math School? So I've not asked the question yet to Tabitha. So... Uh, what do you think, Tabitha? And I'm coming to you next, Matthew. Are you ready? Um, I'd say there's different types of teachers at the school. So whereas in like secondary school, you'd, all the teachers would just follow the same curriculum and it'd be like the set lessons, like you wouldn't really go over what you, what you need to do and they wouldn't really extend you. Whereas we have so many different teachers who specialise in each subject, not even just one subject, mo multiple, even like we have one teacher who done like so many A levels and just watching his thought process teaching us, it's just like you wouldn't get that experience anywhere else. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say every single teacher I've had, they've been so much better than the past ones. Not just because of like their knowledge, but how they teach us and how the lessons are planned. So just like, yeah, we have questions, yeah, we're taught everything we need to know, but we go a little bit beyond. So when we actually end up doing the questions, it seems not easier, but almost like, oh, yeah, I can actually do this because you're taught on a broader scale first. And then it's like, but this is the question that you need to do for A level. <laughs> I think some of the credit has to go to the students as well because they make the teaching easy for us, don't they? Com compared to how it, it is in 11 to 16 schools where sometimes teachers have to manage behaviour, that's not really something our teachers have to worry about very much, is it? No, absolutely. And what's nice as well is like even events like this. I mean, how much preparation did we speak to you about this? No, no. We've not really spoke to the students much because we just have great trust and understand that they are excellent ambassadors and they are wonderful people and we love teaching them so yeah, we enjoy teaching you too type of thing so that's good fun um okay uh matthew anything you want to add to that about what lessons are like and what your experience is like yeah i couldn't agree more with damien i think the attitudes towards learning here are just uh, it's unlike anything we would probably get um but one thing for me is the because of the attitudes and the fact that everyone wants to be here rather than information just being thrown at us and we're told to just learn it we can be given sort of the method of how you get there. We can get we can be given proofs and maths and things, you know, rather than the bare bone basics and just sort of memorize it. We can instead know the the reasoning and logic behind it. That's brilliant. Okay, so obviously we talk about this a lot. In fact, that everyone does the same subject, so you meet people with similar interests and that sort of thing. But has anyone got any experience as to how uh, doing all the subjects together as we do? has made a difference to you in say your day-to-day -day lessons or maybe even your experience beyond that in the extracurricular stuff yeah so what, what, how do we feel about the fact that everyone does the same subject basically and how's that helped so Tobias want to say something yeah I think because everyone does subjects the lessons can be planned in a way where you integrate all the subjects you don't have to worry so much about going over the same things but you also have to worry about people not understanding certain aspects of the course you know what every student understands, not just because of the subjects they do, but also because it's a small enough school that the, the teachers can know you quite well, which allows them to tailor lessons to an extent that you can get through a lot of stuff extremely quickly in a way that you wouldn't be able to if that wasn't the case. Yeah, no, so, uh, Sophie, is something to add? 
I think having the same lessons as everyone around you as well. Like I know who in my class I can sort of go to. Like Thomas helps me a lot. But like if I get stuck, I know what Thomas is good at. And like sometimes he'll ask me for advice or we all sort of help each other because you stay in your one group. Whereas you don't get that in a high school, you're with different people every day. And you might not actually get good friendships, whereas you know everyone in your class and you know everyone like in both classes. But yeah, like as Tobias said, like the teaching is quite forward. I know that um, I've got friends in my old school that are doing physics, but when they then go to the, the maths, they have to like really slow down for everyone because a lot of people don't do physics and don't get the stuff that they get. Whereas we're all at the same level, so we can sort of just fly through it quite quickly. Okay, that's brilliant. And so one, one question that people often ask about our curriculum is with regards to computer science. Um, some people haven't done computer science before. We mentioned that, I think, last week in the open evening too. So those who haven't done computer science before and not... Uh, put your hand up. Who hasn't done computer science at GCSE? So I think that's Maisie and Tobias and Michelle and Sophie and Thomas. That everyone? Okay, that's cool. Okay, so um from so we we think it's really important and Damien often talks about how learning to code is very powerful and we talk to a lot of academic uh, experts and people in industry where the ability to code is, is is fantastic and the idea that these skills are so useful in a maths degree or a physics or stem or engineering degree is really useful so we think it's a really good base skill to learn anyway but I suppose the question would be, can you do well at A-level without having done it at GCSE? And I'm really pleased to see that I've got two people with their hands up ready to answer something about computer science. So, um, OK, go on, Maisie, tell us what you think. So I didn't do computer science at GCSE. And I remember like speaking to Damien when I was looking to join and I was on one of the outreach. He was like, so you're going to have to do computer science. And I said, absolutely not. I'm dropping it as soon as you allow me to. I absolutely hate it. Like, I, I don't want to do it. And obviously things have changed. As I said, it was my favourite subject when I introduced myself. But what Steve did, so Steve was on the science teacher, basically on the first day, he went round, yes, everyone was like, put your hands on who you've done computer science before. And there was quite a few people who had. And then there was also quite I would say pretty much I had equal amount of people who just hadn't like not quite quite a few has actually hadn't done it before. And then either in the first day or like within the first year he'd already made us to start to code things, which I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. I was very confused. I was like Steve, what's going on every five minutes? But he sort of like he was really patient with everyone, probably went over sort of very simple with me about 20 times until I, I got it and it made sense. And now it's one of my favourite subjects. So I would say it doesn't matter if you haven't done it before or even if you think you hate it and you don't want to do it. Like, it's, it's really good to have. Brilliant. Yeah. This is one of my hobby horses because I, I didn't succeed in persuading either of my daughters to do computer science. But it's, uh, it's so important. Computer science, just at the level of learning to code, is, is so essential for people who are going to do research in the mathematical sciences. It's like, um, you know, if you wanted to study English literature and you couldn't do handwriting, it, it, it's just, it's such a fundamental thing. Um, and yet, unfortunately, lots of students haven't been given the opportunity to learn how much fun it is yet. Uh, and so that's what we aim to do with the students here. We don't force them to do the A-level in the end. So if they don't want to, that's fine, but they must learn to code. It's really, really important. And it's also really, really good fun. Yeah. Anna, did you want to add something about computer science? Did I see your hand was up? Um, yeah, so I didn't do the GCSE, but um, I, I do enjoy it now. Um, before, like I joined school, I didn't really consider doing it just to do it A level, but I, I'm glad I did do it because I like how like in, it interlinks quite well with all my other subjects. But I would say if you're going to do it A level without GCSE, you might want to have a read up on how to code a little bit because I went in without any knowledge really of it. And I wish I spent like one or two days just having a look through different bits of coding and how just having more of a feel for computer science. That's brilliant. Okay. And so, Michelle, you said you hadn't done computer science before. 
Um, so how do you find how easy it is to pick it up based on having an ability in maths? How is it picking up computer science then for the first time? So uh, some parts of computer science is uh, kind of related to maths, which, uh, for example, uh, we have a sigma function in maths, and that is similar to a for loop or a while loop if you use uh, iter well, actually, well, actually iterative loops. So that was a link to maths. But uh, I, agree, I agree with Anna's points that it would be better if you know uh, how to code before you came to before you came to this school and start computer science, because uh, I've never done computer science in my previous school, and yeah, uh, during the summer I think I did a little bit of JavaScript and got myself got my head around some of the coding language, and that was kind of helpful to the homework and uh, the assignments and the tests in the first few months and. Yeah, I think that is quite useful to some sense if you could just read a little bit more about some of the language they use or some statements and yeah, pseudocode at least. That's brilliant. And so I'd say, oh, sorry. Best way of doing that uh, for students who are uh, wanting to start to learn a little bit of code is go to a, a website like freecodecamp.net and just start their course. It's completely free and it's really accessible and easy. You don't have to get very far with it. Just just a few hours of work will give you a really good start. So yeah. it's a, a nice summer project. So And our head of computer science, Steve, has just started an outreach about uh, introduction to Python programming, which he does with uh, year 10 and year 11 students. So you can sign up for that on our um, outreach page, which you can find on our website. Okay, that's built. So people, we've just talked about people who've never done computer science, but again, hopefully for people who do do computer science, now I'm looking at Tabitha, um, there's some amazing uh, notes behind you on the wall, which I think you just revealed to us before, may well be computer science. Is that right? So how has computer science been for you, given that you seem to quite like it? Well, I did really enjoy GCSE computer science. These are all my GCSE notes. I just haven't typed, tick, took them off the wall yet. Um, I am finding A-level a little bit tricky. I think it was, we'd done Python in um, GCSE, like we'd done a full year just learning Python. So I got my head wrapped around that at GCSE. And then coming to A-level, it was like learning a whole new a whole new thing. And we get um, homework set every week, which is, um, which is JavaScript. So yeah, it does help you learn it, but it's, it's tricky when you first start getting them done. Um, so it would be nice to like have that time in summer where you do learn JavaScript at least a little bit, because when you get to the school, it's kind of like, finding the time to just focus and learn it. That's brilliant. So again, in the summer with people who do join us, we suggest induction activities and we can direct students to look at those places like David mentioned to get yourself skilled up because clearly that's two of you have said that would have been a quite useful thing. So that's always good to reflect on those things. Okay, you've mentioned about finding things quite difficult um, sometimes there, Tabitha. So the, the question, I suppose the next one is, is what, what happens if you do find things quite difficult? I mean, what do you do? What does the school do? So just in general, for anyone who might be finding things difficult, uh, what sort of things have happened that might have ended up helping you? So has anyone got a thought on that question or shall I just, uh, Emma's got a hand up. So go on, Emma. Um, so in our school, we have supervisions, which is where it's a small group of students with one teacher. Um, and it's kind of like a supervised study period. Um, the teacher does give, uh, give problems to the students, but the students can also ask the teacher about stuff they're struggling with in that specific subject or um, problems on a homework or problems that they found in their own time that they can ask the teacher about. Um, and I find that that's the most uh, helpful way to um, deal with things they are struggling in specific subjects or specific homeworks. Yeah, so that, that was mentioned last week about the idea that when they were at home during COVID, we were doing long lectures, but students were finding it quite hard to take in the information. So we looked at the timetable and adjusted it to have smaller group supervisions. And then we just heard that they were such a good idea with the students that we carried on doing it in the timetable. And I think, again, they do give a really good opportunity to do that. Um, Thomas would like to add something. Yeah, I mean, one thing for me that I find quite quite good is um, like a lot of the teachers have like like an open door policy. Like the amount of times I just walk into Samuel's room, if Samuel's one of the computer science and maths teachers, um, and just ask him questions about things. And they're all, all the teachers, because they're so like, enthusiastic about the subjects, they're always quite happy to just talk to talk, him, you know, like throw a problem with you. Um, and sometimes get very carried away doing it and, and like miss an entire lunch 
Um, and then the other thing I find is perhaps annoyingly, I have a habit of emailing teachers at like nine o'clock with math, with maths questions and, <laughs> and things about physics. Um, at which point I just, the teachers, they'll always respond to emails and things, even if they're like, you know, asleep at, um, or at like a reasonable hour. <laughs> um, but I, the teachers are always like, they'll always make sure that if you have a question, it gets answered. Um, in person or, on a, or over an email or anything like that, you'll always get a question answered. I think sometimes Michelle uh, is, is emailing not just teachers, but also professors. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Isn't it? So we're very lucky that we have professors uh, like Peter Giblin who help us with the teaching, aren't we? Because uh, actually it, it's pretty hard for ordinary mortal teachers like us to stretch some of the talented students that we have in school. So we sometimes have to call in the... Uh, the, the specialists to, to really take students on a lot further. So every week, Peter teaches, I think now three sessions a week with different groups of students in school. And he uh, used to be the head of the maths department at, at the University of Liverpool. And he's a, a legend really, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the key thing is we want everyone to be challenged and feel that they're getting quite a lot from their education. So hopefully whatever level people are at, uh, we can help with that. And I think- I think Michelle was gonna say something about that. Oh, sorry, go on, Michelle. I'm interested to know. Well, so I was just about to say that uh, Professor Gibson is extremely, like, he's a legend, literally a legend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I'll say that I totally agree with Thomas that emailing teachers is definitely the best way to ask questions. Because I also have a habit of emailing teachers, and I uh, usually schedule send them, so they don't receive emails at crazy times of the day. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, and generally they do respond and at a really quick time, I think. And yeah, and they're really enthusiastic. They're generally enthusiastic about the subject. And yeah, they, they will spend a t an entire lunch going through problems that you don't know. And I find that really useful for, uh, for studying as, well, it's not usual that you can always have a teacher to teach you something. And yeah, and that is, that is something I find really good about this school. I think uh, Maisie or Matthew have a hand up. Um, so I think there's even more support as well by the fact that um, so Steve has started to run like lunchtime sort of revision sessions. So that's on, like, on a Wednesday lunch. And Colin runs two separate fair maths sort of revision sessions, like one on Monday and then another one on Tuesday for the people who can't make it for different clubs on Monday. But I also feel as well as, because when you get to year 13, if you do want to then drop to a level of subject, like say you want to drop to an AS, everyone's perfectly okay with that. So I've dropped to AS fair the maths, which means I have a lot more free time than other people who do like the full four or the year 12s. So anytime, so I usually, have like on my freeze, I'll usually put that aside and have it. Okay, so I'm going to do this math problem today, and pretty much guaranteed any time I can wander around and uh, someone is free, like someone is free to help me, and will be able to help in some capacity, or will try to to the best of their ability to like help me get through the problem, even if it isn't their subject of expertise. They'll try and help anyway, so that's always nice stuff. So. Even when I'm free and I'm like no one else is supposed to be free, there's always at least someone I can find. That's great. Okay, I say again, I'm just conscious as well, people in the chat box, if you've got any questions, um, please feel free to type something in the chat box and we will ask that to our students. So um, feel free to do that. So, yeah, one question I suppose people might have is. A lot of people that come here, like you've all come from different schools. So I'm looking at you and I think that maybe two of you are in the same school, but otherwise everyone was in different schools. And I think mostly people come from schools by themselves in ones uh, to join us. So how quickly do you settle into school and maybe how easy was it to get to know people and to make friends in school? Has anyone got any thoughts on that one? Uh, Tobias, go on. Um, so... Before I came to this school, I was extremely bad at getting to know people, uh, particularly despite being in my, this secondary school so before I came here from year eight to 11. By the time I left, I still didn't know everyone in my class's names. Um, 
But when I came here, within a couple of months, I knew everyone quite well. So it is, it is remarkable how quickly you just get to know everyone because you're, you really want to be here. And so there's an incredible motivation that I think makes communication extremely easy and enjoyable. Brilliant. Um, Thomas? Yeah, hi. I don't kind of I don't kind of fit this really because I've got a twin brother who came with me. Um, but like I remember in the in like the first week we did like a bunch of icebreaker activities, um, which are obviously really good to get to know people. But like for for me who I'm very very socially inept or at least was very much more worse when I started, um, I was like that was like a nightmare for me. And then I ended up having like to step out of the very first activity to kind of like get some air and stuff. Um, and in that time, like every single teacher managed to walk through the corridor and every single one of them checked if I was all right. And then everyone just had an eye on me the whole time, making sure that I was yeah, getting on fine with everybody and know my way around. And I've got, I, admittedly, I've dragged some people from my old school into year 12. Um, but I've, other than that, I've everyone from that I didn't know before. I know everyone's names now, especially because it's such a small, small school. I know everyone's names and I get along with everybody and I just not something I would have thought I would have been able to do before, before coming here. But, um, there's definitely, it's not always easy for people to, to settle in, but that you get so much support, even for the most socially in people you, you make your way through. Can I say, um, Thomas, like you're saying socially in I mean, yeah, I understand, but, um, Thomas does assemblies for us. He goes and does, he, he teaches activities to students on STEM Saturdays. Uh, he does supervisions. He's, it, you know, you're an incredible part of the school. So I think, Thomas, you've gone from feeling how you felt at the start to where you are now. Like, we are very proud of you. And um, that's just fantastic. Um, yeah, really proud. Uh, Maisie or Matthew? Hello. Yeah. So I came here knowing no one. Um, and I remember the icebreakers, and I remember coming the going home after the icebreakers. I just sat on the train and went, "That was easy." You know, you, you spend all this time building up the worry of you know new school, new people, and got to fit in. But you can just be yourself, and everyone, as Dubai said, wants to be here. Everyone wants to wants to be friends with you, wants to work with you. Everyone they will happily build around you and accommodate for you. So. The, there was no issues, really. No, that's brilliant. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll link to that. Like maybe people worrying about something or maybe people struggling with stuff. Like, I mean, the question is, is what's our like, support for your well-being and our pastoral support like in school? So has anyone got any thoughts on like how uh, teachers and the students and the staff help you to feel settled and good with your well-being? Has anyone got any thoughts on any aspects of those you'd like to share? Or if you don't want to share anything about personal experience, you can talk about what we do or where we do things. Oh, wow, everyone's got their hands up all of a sudden. Excellent. Uh, okay, let's go to Tabitha. What do you think? We have one-to-ones weekly um, with our form tutors. So I think that really helps you just get a lot off your chest as well. Um, we, we talk about a lot to do with school, but as well to do with our personal life. You don't have to talk about anything. It's just a chance so that you don't have to like go up and talk to someone yourself. You have someone there who's maybe notice if you've been acting different or if something's been happening. Um, you'll always have someone there to say, like, are you okay with everything that's been going on? Like how how is life basically? What like what is going on? Um, and I think whatever's happened, um, all the teachers have always noticed, they always pick up on things. Um, you don't have to, you know, express your feelings or say how you feel, but you just know that someone's always there if you do need someone. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, Emma, did you have your hand up? Um, yeah, so I tend to get quite stressed about exams. And there was one particular um, physics test I did where I didn't get a score that I wanted to and I was upset about it. But um, my physics teacher sat next to me at the end of the lesson and she just like uh, talked about it to me and uh, made me feel really, um, she basically just made me feel quite good about it instead of being stressed. Um, and I think, um, I don't know, somewhere else they might just say, oh, don't worry about it, you got a good score. But she uh, really like um, 
understood how I was feeling and uh, talked through it with me, which I really appreciated. That's lovely. Thank you. Uh, Maisie or Matthew? It's hard to judge. <laughs> so as well, because I, same as Emma, get genuinely terrified around exams. And usually same with Aurora. Aurora's always got chocolate biscuits of every variety. She calls them stress biscuits. They're always there in her room for like you to just go to. But also as well, like the school is really accommodating. Like I've had stuff come up in my personal life around exam times. And I completely felt comfortable enough to go to speak to teachers about them. And they've proposed solutions to be like, we can push them, we can take it into consideration, we can do all stuff like this, which I, I didn't think I would have got sort of at my other school, like my past school. I don't think they would have thought about it in that way and thought to make accommodations for it, which is really nice to happen. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, Thomas? Yeah, I mean, just on the back of that, Aurora stress bits, uh, Aurora stress bits, biscuits, uh, biscuits are brilliant, um, and I think, like, yeah, I like, think there's the one to one time, um, and like specific things as well with the like, around exams, but they for me it's the the open door policy again, they kind of think I don't think it's such a formal thing, but all the teachers are just like open, like I don't, I think there's hardly anyone in the school who hasn't gone to one of the teachers to ask about. Like if they can just sit down and have a chat with them, um, and like even if like you haven't needed to go and ask someone, the offer's always there. Like I remember, um, in like the the, like the first year when we were all in lockdown, and all the teachers had a were offering to, like, including like um, Carrie and Catherine in the office were saying that if you needed to chat over lockdown, you could just join us like a call with them and and chat. Or like in school, it's the same thing. We'd just go down and talk to them about something, um. And because it's such a small school as well, the the teachers will always notice. Like if if they they'll, they'll be able to tell if you're not having a, a good time, um, and they can they'll always come and check up on you and make sure you're okay. Um, and you'll never just kind of be left to yourself if like that's not what's best. They'll always make sure that you're okay. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so um. I suppose we've, we've covered quite a lot of things about the school now. So um, as I say, I keep saying, um, if anyone's got any questions, please do ask. But um, OK, so you've talked about relationships and things with um, staff and people in the school. So do you still keep in touch with people from your old school? Because some people obviously making big decisions about whether to leave or not. Um, so you do decide to come here, you make friends quite quick. You said, do you still keep in touch with your friends? That can be a very quick answer from your old school. Any thoughts on that one? Uh, well, then I can see nodding. You might be able to see some nodding. I've had so yeah I think I think the way I look at it is that there's more people a thumbs up from Sophie there so and Tabitha too brilliant okay yeah. um, so there's one question in the chat box about do students have any idea of career plans after they leave school okay let's start with that question then from uh, do you think you get a good idea about careers through activities we do in school and then if you want to explain if you've got any career plans please do so yeah let's have a look we've got quite a few hands up so go on Anna tell us um, what you think about that so I'm not sure about my career so far, but because of things like Curriculum X, it's like opened my eyes up to paths that I'd rather go down. Like before I joined the school, I was really fixated on like doing either physics or maths. But um, because of Curriculum X, we had like an oceanography talk and like like stuff on not quite geography, like geophysics, that's what. And um, it's made me like think about natural science more and like going into just different areas of interest, which I wouldn't have considered if I didn't come here. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so just to clarify, Curriculum X is something that we do that essentially involves a lot of things, but there are a lot of talks, a lot of interactions, a lot of trips with uh, academics and people from industry. Uh, so we've got two people from the finance industry, some Liverpool University alumni coming in on Friday to talk about um, some things to do with working in finance. So yeah, they, I think there's a decent level of stuff that Anna says there that's coming that way that's quite interesting. Okay, uh, Emma? Um, I was also going to say Curriculum X is really helpful um, in like learning about different careers. We have people um, coming into the school and telling us about what they do from uh, loads of different things. Um, like, for example, the games development one I found really interesting. Um, and I, um, I'm already quite interested in games development, but I didn't know how physics could be incorporated into it. Um, 
and that's what part of the talk was about so um now I'm more interested in that so yeah curriculum x is a really good way to sort of expand your horizons and see different um career paths that's brilliant uh Sophie I just wanted to go back to basically when I was in year 11. So when I was in year 11, I went to the open year of the school and saw that um, the school was only doing the four subjects that we do currently. And I was set on doing biology. And Damien will remember this, that basically Damien had a big conversation with me and said, are you sure you want to come here? Because I know you want to do biology. Um, because I was set on being a marine biologist. Um, in year 11 and then Damien basically put me in in touch with the careers advisor at Liverpool Uni and they've assured me that by doing these subjects I'm actually in a better position to do the career I want to go down um so I've been getting involved with all the oceanography department in Liverpool Uni and that's the route I'm going to take now but basically it was thanks to Damien on our open evening that I was involved with the uni and knew that I could actually do physics and it's a better route for me to take. Well, what's nice is our students, like Sophie, um, she is really interested in the environment. And I think one of you was talking about um, going to see the Ocean and Climate Science Department in the university. Sophie arranged that trip. She organised for all of Year 12 to go and have a wonderful experience doing some uh, lectures, talks, finding out about the degrees that they offer and looking at some practical tasks. So, uh, yeah, brilliant, Sophie. Keep it going. Um, we, we have an ambition as a school of enabling our, our students to have a global impact, which sounds like just one of those big fancy things that schools say and they don't really mean uh, and it, it could mean lots of different things but in Sophie's case Sophie's a really good example she's always wanted to have an impact on the environment um, particularly the oceans and this is a really good example of understanding that you, having the maths and the science and the computer science skills is actually what enables you to have that global impact in the end and that what the universities are looking for is people to join their research teams to solve the problems like pollution in the ocean and global warming. And what they need on those research teams is capable computer scientists and capable mathematicians and, and fundamental scientists who can really figure things out and model things. So it, I think it, we have to get that message out to schools when students are choosing their A-levels, that if they really want to be powerful and have an impact, then these, these sorts of A-levels are really crucial. Yeah, we've got we've got trips to go to uni fairs, apprenticeship fairs, and we look into the work experience and working with um, academic staff on individual projects in year 12. So there's quite a lot of links and stuff we do dig. I've got, I'm conscious before people have got their hands up, uh, have, you got, have you got wonderful points you'd like to make or should we ask, ask another question? So does anyone really want to go? Maisie's nodding her head, so go on, Maisie. Yeah, as well, I came in with um, a idea that I wanted to do something in maths and physics, and that's what I knew. And I think that's, I think it was Dave, I think it was you. I sat down and I was like, I want to do maths, I want to do physics, and I didn't want to teach because I would not be good at that. So what can I do that sort of combines the two and has more of like a problem-solving element? And then Dave was instantly like engineering and then gave me a few websites to look at that he knew of to help with it. And it like, really steered me towards like, that path. And I've looked into it more and it's what I've really enjoyed. Like it's what I feel like I've been a really enjoyed university. And quite a, quite a few of my university choices that I've picked have come from like the teachers recommending them to me. Which if because like that's like Aurora's done her PhD at Manchester. So that's what she suggested to me because she said it's a really nice environment with really good research facilities. So that's what you would, I feel like you would be, I feel like you would thrive there. And it, it's nice to have that, like like individual recommendations to me specifically, like other teachers think would be a good fit for me to help me decide on career paths and stuff like that. Brilliant. Okay. Um, I think Michelle and, Tabith, uh, Michelle and Tobias, sorry, have got something they might want to add. Uh, Michelle? Uh, so uh, I was, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I came, but uh, I think it was at the interview, Damien put me in touch with uh, Professor Gibson and from, and uh, 
we had problem solving sessions and now we're doing differential geometry and through all these uh, sessions and through the progress that we made professor Gibbon talked a lot about what he did in his career uh, and that gave kind of an introduction to what people do after they graduate from university if they have a math degree or uh, after they studied mathematical sciences and I think that was kind of uh, uh, inspiring to me such that I knew that what people can do after they graduate like except for teaching so and now I'm quite set up like I'm quite uh, I'm quite ready to pursue my further career in maths so I think that was quite good to have that's brilliant yeah. okay uh, Tobias? Um, I think the teachers really do sort of comb through for as many opportunities as they can find. Uh, I know uh, both Aurora and you, Dave, uh, basically multiple, multiple teachers, constantly sending out emails with, we found this new research placement, we found this work experience opportunity, here are 10 different programmes you could join every, every week. Because it, it, they, it, I think it's fair to say it really invested in giving you everything they can to be able to find what you want to do and all of the opportunities to work through that yourself. Um, and especially the curriculum, the curriculum X as well is also just very good because it does give you not only expose you to those different areas, but it gives you a good impression of how academics like that present their research and how they will, how they explain it to you. Um, the school doesn't just do those as lectures, they also do other lectures. And I think getting that experience of lectures is, is very good. And, and also for linking to things like the Liverpool Mathematics Society, we can go and see all sorts of other lectures as well. Um, <laughs> so if you want lectures, we've got loads of them. <laughs> that's brilliant. And it's quite interesting. The question that's just come up in the chat box is basically when it comes to the location of the school and the connection to Liverpool University, how benef beneficial is it to you compared to other schools who may not have the same opportunities? And I think that question might have come through with quite a few things that the students have already said, because we do have opportunities for academics to get on board with us. And, and, and do some work with us. And the nice thing is as well, actually, because our school is not just about our sixth formers, it's also about the outreach we do to the whole region. So for example, on Saturday, there was an open invite for students across the region in year uh, 10, 11, and 12 to come and do some physics with us in school. So we had 60 students come to our school. And again, they got the opportunity to go to University of Liverpool as well, and to do some work with um, Carsten, the professor in charge of the physics department so there was a nice chance to go over there as well and I think some of our students here helped with that and it was a really nice experience so we do benefit I think massively from that link and Damien might want to share some more um, advantages that we get as part of being linked to the university. It's uh, actually caused us quite a problem in a way because we were determined to stay close to the university very close to the university when we move to our permanent building uh, and that really limits choices of where that permanent building can be but it, it will be adjacent to the university campus. Um, it is crucial for the students experience for the environment that, that they're in every day and that you know the, where they the route through which they come to school and they see themselves I think very often as university students that, that's already how they see themselves um, and the fact that we can use lecture theatres and use the sports facilities but most importantly the fact that we have access easy access to the academics from the university I think uh, and we can get them to come into school um, and and put our students in, into their lecture theatres sometimes as well uh, so I, I think the the sort of math school recipe of linking schools with universities it really does work. It's amazing, really. Why didn't anybody think of it before? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's, it's, and as I say, you know, we, we have a range of people that we can put other schools in touch with as well. So other schools can benefit from this because we want everyone in the region to study maths, further maths, physics, computer science, wherever they do it. And if they come to us, you know, we are another option. But yeah, we just want everyone to do these subjects as well as they can. Okay, um, right. Okay, I'm just seeing it getting towards seven o'clock. If any of you here, do you think there's something we haven't said or discussed that you would have loved to have heard when you were in year 11 thinking about what sixth form you want to join? Is there anything you might want to add to what we've said today before we finish? And if there's any other questions to go into the chat box, now's the time. But has anyone got anything they think they'd like to add that you don't think that we've discussed? And Damien as well, anyone else might want to add anything? 
Oh, Damien has his hand up. Uh, I should go to Damien. I, I have a question. Uh, this might be a little bit negative. It's not meant to be. Um, but uh, every year there are some students who apply and we don't give them places because we don't think that they will be happy here. Uh, and uh, everything you've said makes it sound like this school is just perfect and everything is great and the teachers and the staff are all lovely. But there are downsides. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard work. Uh, you have to be prepared to do a lot of homework and a lot of students have to travel a long distance to get here. Um, are, are there any types of students where your advice to them would be, no, actually look elsewhere, this, this school might not really be the place, it's right for me, but it wouldn't necessarily be right for you. What kind of students would not be happy here, do you think? Um, I think if... When you, if you're enthusiastic about something, if when you're enthusiastic about that, you can really get stuck into it. If you can be made enthusiastic about something by having other people that are enthusiastic about it around you, then it will really suit you. Mm. But if you're not motivated by other people being interested in something around you, or you can't really, really just get stuck into something, almost sort of to the ignorance of everything else, just um then you might not be invested in the same way um great yeah anything to add to that sophie i'd say we've got a lot of like a big split in our school of people that are really really interested in maths and will take a lot of time out of like their free time to research it and if i'm all honest like that's not me I'm just someone that really enjoyed maths. She says, like, I enjoyed it and I was good at it. So I, my advice would be that if you're good at it and you enjoy it when, when you do well at it, it's good to come to school, but only if you're prepared to achieve and you want to achieve a lot and you want to work hard for what you want to achieve. I'd say if you know you're not going to be driven to do the work, the school's not for you. Yeah. Because you so do need to work hard. The, the students that we, we would very regretfully turn away would be the ones who found the admissions test really difficult and, and didn't enjoy the interview process or didn't demonstrate to us that they, they could enjoy the learning here. Um, so it's not many, but uh, it's few. Maisie or Matthew, anything to add to that? I was going to say, because these are hard A-levels to begin with. Like They are some of the most difficult A-levels you can do. And then with the way our curriculum works is that you finish A-level maths and you finish year. And there's enough lessons to cover all the content and cover it well. But you also need to be going back and looking at the same time. You can't just rely on the lessons. And in the year 12, I think we, we had a free a week. Which yeah, that's was, one was, free lesson. For one a week. free lesson a week. Which was good because you could get some work done in that, but you do need to invest time after school and outside of the school day into keeping up with it. Like, more, I feel like more so than you would with other. Maybe I can't compare to other A-levels because I don't do them and these are hard ones, but investing more time in after school, like you need to be prepared to do that. Like, to yeah. keep up with the content and stuff like that. I'm really glad you said that. I, I think that's... I, a really important thing for anybody to understand if they're going to come here, it, it's an intense timetable all week. You don't get many non-contact times during the week. Um, and there is a load of homework to do in the evening. So um, buyer beware, I would say. It, you know, the, the students who come here and work hard get a huge amount out, out of it and really enjoy it. And we love teaching them. But you do have to be prepared to commit. Could I just say on top of that, as sort of a... In scaring people off perhaps a little bit less is i think it's only do. <laughs> okay or if you if you really enjoy it it's not just i don't think you shouldn't get the impression that you're just going to be spending you know six hours every night after school working till midnight every night it's on maths it's if you really enjoy it then you will find it the school will make you find working easy. Even if you if you are capable of working on stuff you are interested in outside of school hours now, then this, and you are interested in these subjects, 
then the school will make you not, it won't feel, it probably won't feel like the homework you might get now in other subjects. You will want, you will enjoy doing it. You will feel invested, I think. And it's kind of the same for the staff. I think sometimes it doesn't even feel like work for us, even though we do work quite long hours, we just enjoy doing it. Yeah. Michelle? Can I just add that working, for, for example, working five more hours after school doesn't really feel like work. It's just, uh, well, it's just some of the work you can... <laughs> it's just taking some I of the work. I feel like I just lessons. need to clarify here that Tobias and Michelle may be a little unusual in the number of hours they do after school. <laughs> Two hours is normal. <laughs> yeah, well... Five or six so, hours, less normal, I would say. <laughs> So uh, working after school isn't exactly working, it's just taking some of the uh, content in lessons a little bit further and extending it. So it's yeah. not the typical kind of working that you might expect before you come to the school. Although, well, studying is hard work, so yeah. Yeah. And, and it wouldn't necessarily be the same work for every student. So for, for some students, I, I wouldn't expect them to do the routine homework that other students are doing because they've already got that idea, they've got that material, and they are much better off spending their time doing um, other problems and, and enriching the maths that they're learning because they've already got the basics. So we don't waste people's time with homework that they don't need to do. They do the homework that they need to do. Brilliant. Okay, so, um, right, well, I think that's given quite a good overview, hopefully. So, listen, again, I want to thank a massive thank you to all our students. You truly are, like, the greatest thing about our school, and hopefully that comes across as, like, you know, this is a small sample of the students that we have here, and we're very impressed and proud that you're able to put across uh, all your opinions so clearly, which is excellent, and thank you for your time. Um, so yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. Great job. Yeah, and as, as, as always, if anyone else has got any further questions, we're more than happy to arrange uh, visits to school, one-to-one uh, -one Zoom conversations. That's absolutely fine. There might be some students here watching this from Hong Kong, like Michelle uh, was here in case anyone had any questions. Um, if anyone is relocating, would like some information or advice about that sort of thing, that's something you can have a conversation with Damien about. And again, uh, that has worked quite successfully this year, so it can carry on working successfully. So again, whatever that may be, if we can help with you, please do get in touch, but we're always willing um, to do what you need to judge whether this will be the right place for you next year. And hopefully we will meet many of you in person over the next few weeks again and look forward to seeing you in September. Has anyone else got anything to add before we leave? No, okay. Uh, we just got a thank you for in the chat box there. Um, so very impressive students and again so well done to you all uh, and yeah this will be put onto um, YouTube as well so you'll be able to watch the recording of this so if your daughter did miss it they will be able to catch up and watch uh, at a later date okay brilliant everyone thank you so much um, and uh, have a good evening see you again thanks bye, bye.